Happy Monday to everybody. Hope you're all enjoying the long bank holiday weekend, whether you get the benefit or not. Be sure to hit that like button, share with your friends and family, and subscribe to the channel. Did you get the chance to see or read the European forecast for the upcoming summer season? I delivered it yesterday in the live stream at 4 p.m., and you can check that out. If you happen to miss it, you can check that out. Just simply click the live tab uh, on the playlist here on the channel and you can watch that back in detail. I basically just combed through what was written, giving you the, the backing to the ideas that I had, building the evidence to support the forecast that I've got. And we shall wait and see what happens as we move into meteorological summer. So obviously we do have quite an unsettled picture as we end the month of May, begin the month of June. Well, that remains to be a seen. Uh, this is the current visible satellite imagery over our part of Europe and you can see that we've got the areas of cloud covering quite a large area of France and uh, UK and Ireland Earth space. We've got this frontal system associated with low pressure out of the Atlantic that is going to be moving in from the southwest as we go into tomorrow. That is obviously Tuesday. You can see here this little swirl of cloud cover just to the west of uh, Ireland as well. But we are seeing plenty of sunshine and showers through the course of today. And you can see here, if we look at uh, the current radar seen by Weather Online, this is the uh, latest shower activity across the UK. Uh, very little in the way of shower activity, may I add, across Ireland and Northern Ireland, but that will change as we move into tomorrow as that frontal system brings a spell of fairly heavy and persistent rain. Temperatures, uh, no great shakes for early Monday afternoon. You can see here widely 16, 17 north and very similar across the rest of the UK here all the way down to the south coast. We're only talking about 16, 17 Celsius as you can see here in Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. We're generally in the low to mid teens at the moment here. So this is early afternoon uh, at the time I'm recording today's video. Looking at the uh, the overview chart here of the GFS, this is the current situation. There's that area of low pressure as uh, shown in the satellite image just a second ago. There's no, another area of low pressure out over the central north Atlantic. What is going to happen is uh, we've got low pressure dominating at the moment. So therefore, with plenty of strong incoming solar radiation, and that is allowing the atmosphere to bubble up and produce these charged local thunderstorms and longer spells of rain also so as we move out of monday into tuesday here's the next frontal system associated with that uh, central north atlantic low that is going to bring a spell of heavy and persistent rain uh, into the early portions of tomorrow and that basically just continues to set the tone of uh, unsettled conditions now looks as if as we move towards the second half of this week uh, we will continue to see sunshine and showers, longer spells of rain, but it's as we move towards the upcoming weekend, seen by the GFS Ensemble anyway, or the GFS Operational, may I uh, get that right. You can see here an area of low pressure to the west of the UK and Ireland. What that's going to do is uh, it's going to try and exert its influence, and eventually that will dominate the UK pattern as we move into the weekend. But you can see very, very messy conditions once again, continuing across the vast majority of the mainland of Europe. So this very, very unsettled May continues across much of the continent here, across the UK and Ireland also. And uh, But as we move into the weekend, you can see that area of high pressure, according to the GFS anyway, starts to settle things down. As heights come up, we we'll start to see the sharp productivity start to lower. And it looks as if it, it, it should be a fairly decent weekend to come but no major heat to speak about um this is an area of high pressure that is going to be dragging in something a little bit fresher from the north so temperatures are going to remain fairly subdued for the end of may beginning of june uh so uh, but the, the the one take home really is that we will start to shut down the shower activity and settle things down. We should start to see more in the way of settled and sunny conditions into the upcoming weekend. So that is at least good news. Now, one thing I want to point out to you is with a negative NAO developing along with the AO, 
we are likely to see that area of high pressure shift back west over the Atlantic. And it, what it is going to do is it may well allow something colder as we go towards the middle portions of next week, a, a surge of northerly winds and area of low pressure dropping in from the north here. So this is certainly going to be quite a disappointing mid to end of week one of June. Uh, if we look at the 850 temperatures here, you can see what I'm talking about. So this gives you a better handle in terms of the air mass that we're likely to talk about. And that is a rather chilly looking map. If we look at the two meter temperature anomalies here, you can see that it's cold in average at the surface across the board of Western Europe, the majority of Western Europe with the exceptions of uh, Iberia here. But this certainly does look as if it is gonna be a surge of chilly conditions that will drop south and it may linger well into you know day seven through ten of june which uh, is quite a no notable period actually of uh, below average temperatures now if we look at the cfs v2 here for the two uh, temperature anomalies for the for a seven day period this is week one and it's actually shown slightly below average now that may be a little bit uh, overdone in terms of cold and average but nonetheless, you're getting the general idea here. And even in the week two, so this is the period between the 2nd and the 9th of June, and it's indicating average to potentially slightly below average temperatures. Then it looks as if the model indicates warmer temperatures uh, coming back into play once again. In terms of precipitation, like I say, albeit it's, it's looking cooler, week one, still looking wet because we've got all the showers around at the moment, and that's going to continue through the remainder of this week but settle things down as we move towards the weekend, hopefully. Week two, you can see here that we have got the period between the 2nd and the 9th of June. It's showing below average rainfall, which is good news, obviously. And uh, But you can see here the reason for that shutdown in shower activity and rainfall is that we will replace low pressure, as can be seen here, with higher pressure into week two. So, uh, so that's something to take a little note of as we go into uh, the month of June here. So it looks as if it's going to be uh, somewhat drier than what we're seeing at the moment, but also nothing really to write home about in terms of temperature. It actually looks as if it could be colder than average. Uh, let's have a quick look actually at the current Euro European temperatures because I haven't shown that in a little while here just to kind of give you a rough idea. Sorry about that. Uh, still speaking about some fairly significant warmth up the eastern side of the continent cooler across the west with exceptions of southern and central spain we've got, we've got temperatures in the upper 20s even low 30s at the moment here uh, fairly subdued temperatures under a lot of cloud cover across much of france and into the the low countries here and the uk obviously but further east where we've got higher pressure we're speaking about temperatures as high as 27 celsius close to the arctic, arctic circle here uh, of Scandinavia and down into the, the, the Baltic region here. So Lithuania, Latvia um, and um, is, is talking about generally upper 20s, which is considerably warmer than the late May average. Um, finally, I want to show you this here. This is a tweet, actually. So obviously the summer forecast was put out yesterday, but um, it didn't. I wasn't able to show the, the graphics properly on the actual written forecast so i'm going to just quickly glance back at this this is by world climate service and these are the findings for similar sea surface temperatures currently to past years so the years that um they found most similar is 2023 1967 2017 2008 1953 2020 98 62 07 and 99 and generally speaking for the June through August period, the findings with those years show lower than average pressure over the UK, Ireland and near continent above average across, say, Iberia and also across southeastern Europe here, which is quite interesting. Kind of fits quite nicely with my overall ideas. This is what I didn't show you, unfortunately, and I forgot to do that. This is temperature anomalies based on those years compared to what we've got now. You've actually got below average conditions across the UK. Uh, or sorry, across Ireland and parts of Northern Ireland, average across the bulk of the UK with exceptions of warm than average across the southeast 
Uh, in terms of precipitation, quite important, fitting with the ideas that I've got, showing wetter than average conditions. As I've said, a warmer than average summer, but a, a slightly wetter than average summer is what I think is going to be the case here. And this is a 100 meter wind speeds here, based again on those years. You've actually got, it looks like, above average wind, if I'm reading that chart correctly, um, and seen by the, the World Climate Service. Now, I also wanted to show you something that, I, again, I forgot uh, to show you in yesterday's live stream, was findings with regards to the Indian Ocean Dipole here. I thought this was quite interesting, because, again, it kind of related somewhat to uh, the European summer pattern, so it basically says that the latest Copernicus ECMWF models still show a significantly positive Indian Ocean Dipole or IOD in the months ahead, although they've backed off a bit from last month. A positive IOD tends to favour a hot, dry summer in Central and Eastern Europe. Now remember what I said, the biggest heat is going to be Southern and Eastern Europe, I think, with back and forth and limited extremity of heat across our part of the world, UK and Ireland and near continent. I think the wet ground is going to have a feedback, enhancing um, water vapour within the atmosphere, and that tempers the strength of heat that we can uh, see when you tend to have wetter than average soil moisture content. I also question the idea with regards to the wet ground actually enhancing lower pressure, versus dry ground enhancing higher pressure. That uh, is very much open to debate and question and your own opinion. But my opinion is there is a possibility that the uh, soil moisture content could in, uh, influence atmospheric pressure. But basically it says here that the, the IOD, like I said, tends to favor hot, dry summers in Central and Eastern Europe, but usually combined with warm enzos, not cool. So that is the caveat to that general idea so yeah there's been plenty of content issued here on the channel back through the course of the weekend just gone on saturday i released the 93rd edition of the global weather and climate report we took a little bit of a world tour in terms of the wet versus dry areas around the planet uh, looking at the noaa hurricane forecast which is the most aggressive they've ever put out um with regards to hurricane activity in the atlantic and so there's plenty of reason to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so we are going to have the june outlook in the coming days to come as well so check that out also uh, and let me just see if i've remembered everything else um these incidentally are the it's uh, the c3s multi-system forecast in terms of sea surface temperature profile for the upcoming june through august period warm atlantic We've got the La Nina signature in the Pacific as well. So you tend to have uh, sinking air over the eastern Pacific, rising air over the warm Atlantic here. What influence does that have in our pattern? Pattern, I think it's likely to be the case later in the summer season. So we need to pay attention to that. But certainly a very interesting summer coming up nonetheless. So I hope you can stick around during the course of the summer and we'll follow the weather pattern as it evolves. Enjoy the rest of your Monday and I'll see you hopefully tomorrow with more. Bye for now.